Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain um, why two waves have to be coherent before they can interfere with each other. So to begin, let's have a sinusoidal wave um, with amplitude A and intensity I. And let's superpose this wave with another wave. Okay, wow, well, not bad, my drawing. Notice that this second wave that, are, that I've just drawn uh, has the same period and also the same amplitude and intensity. Now, let me ask you uh, what is the intensity of the resultant wave after the superposition? If we were to ask a, a layman this question, um, the layman will probably answer, oh, it has got to, it has got to be 2i, right? Because um, conservation of energy, mm, i plus i should give us 2i. Ah, these are people who haven't learned the principle of superposition. Uh, we know, right? We know that we have to sum up the displacement first. So actually, uh, it depends, right? If the two waves um, were to superpose in phase, then we are going to get constructive interference. The resultant wave will have amplitude 2a, intensity 4i. On the other hand, if the two waves were to superposed in antiphase, the resultant wave will have amplitude of zero and intensity of zero. So it depends on the phase difference between the two waves. And these are things that we know already. Now, let me draw another wave. So this wave goes like this for two cycles. And then for some reason, there's a jump. There's a jump in this waveform, maybe in now, uh, becomes um, this. Uh, and then we get another abrupt change yet again. Maybe now it, it looks like this. But this uh, continues for two cycles and then we get yet another abrupt change like this. So you may be asking, why is happening? Why is there such a wave? Well, this is actually what a light wave does. The light wave that is emitted by um, the light bulb or the sun or the candle flame, they is actually not a continuous, uh, continuous sinusoidal wave. The wave is actually emitted uh, in burst. Uh, each burst lasts about um, 10 to the power of negative 8 negative 8 seconds. It's a very short time, but uh, for light wave, we actually have like uh, about a million cycles, a million complete cycles in this very short duration of time. So I'm drawing just uh, two cycles, but actually we have about a million cycles in this short burst. So every time you get the next burst, you get an abrupt change in the phase. Get it? Now imagine what happens if we try to superpose uh, two such waves. So now let's superpose these two waves. Now during this burst here, the two waves are misaligned by a quarter cycle. If I do the math, I know that the resultant wave will have an intensity of 2i. For the second burst here, uh, this one is obvious because they are in antiphase. So we have destructive interference and the resultant wave has got amplitude of zero. In the next burst, the two waves are off by a quarter cycle again. So I'll do the math for you. The resultant wave has an intensity of 2i. You can do the last burst because in the last burst, they are in phase. So we have constructive interference. We get amplitude of 2a and intensity of 4i. So what is the intensity of the resultant wave? Now, because the phase difference between these two waves keeps changing, right? It keeps changing. So the outcome of the superposition also keeps changing. So um, we have to start talking about the average intensity, the, the intensity averaged over time. So the average intensity is actually equals to, well, sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's 4, sometimes it's 2, and, and it can be something else, all right? But the average intensity is going to be 2i. Now, these two waves are said to be coherent. 
By coherence, we mean that the phase difference is constant. It doesn't have to be zero. It doesn't have to be 2 pi or some special angles. It just has to remain constant. But these two waves are said to be incoherent. Because the phase difference between them is not constant. It keeps changing. The sinusoidal wave is maintained for a very short time only, 10 to the power of negative 8, before they, the, it randomly changes to some other phases. So, do two coherent light waves interfere? Yes, they do. Because uh, depending on the phase difference between them, we can measure that the resultant waves has intensity of 0 or 4i or whatever. Do two incoherent light waves interfere? Well, in my mind, maybe, maybe we believe they do. Maybe in our mind, we can imagine that it's switching from constructive to destructive to partial constructive to whatever. It keeps switching. But nobody can come up with an experiment that shows that this is happening. That the switching is too fast. 10 to the power of negative 8 second is simply too fast. Instead, all experiments will show that two incoherent light waves always uh, result in an average intensity of 2i. Nobody can use two incoherent light waves to demonstrate constructive or destructive interference because you'll never be able to measure a resultant intensity of 0 or 4i. You always measure 2i. So in all practical sense, you need coherence before you can observe interference. That's all. Ta-ta!